Yes. <coughs> the, the name is Elijah. Me and my stick. And I ain't going to say anything about him because he's got a big stick. <laughs> and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. This, you know, I, I really kind of wanted you to have, I wanted a feel of Elijah. Amen. Listen, we need the spirit of Elijah more than ever before. More than ever before. And the spirit of Elijah will come before the coming of our Lord. We've got to understand that. Who was Elijah? Who am I? Well, I tell you what, I was a nobody. I was raised in the highlands of Gilead. Tishbite is what they call me. The rough lands of Gilead, just on the north side of the Dead Sea, just east of the river. Not very many people there. I was just minding my own business one day, and the Lord called me. He said, I want you to go talk to that wicked king. I didn't really want to go, but the Lord felt I needed to. And I was one who really believed in God. Do y'all really believe in God? I answered the call. They call me a prophet. A prophet of action. Because it was more than just talk that I had to do. It was action that I had to take. I had to put my self on the line. It wasn't always comfortable. Matter of fact, it was quite uncomfortable when you have to go face a king of wickedness and tell him he better stop or you're going to pronounce a drought. But I did. And I've got to tell you that God took care of me every step of the way. It wasn't always comfortable at one time, I was fed by the crows. They took care of me during part of the drought. And then another time, a widow who didn't have anything had to help take care of me. But of course, y'all are going to find out all about this and realize it. In God's Word, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, And Elijah, that's me, the Tishbite, of inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand there shall not be dew or rain these years except at my word you see these people who were wicked were worshiping false gods they didn't know the true God. They wanted to worship the God of fire and rain. But I knew the one God who could stop rain and who could start it when he wanted to. So he had me pronounce to the king Ahab and his wife Jezebel that there would be no rain for three years. Nothing but drought. After this, our God told me I needed to go to another place and get away. It was called the Brook of Corinth. We'll be covering that next week. But I'm going to tell you the darkest of times. God calls an illuminary. He brings out the light in the darkest of times. Do you believe this? He's doing this today. Folks, we need a common nobody from the hills of Gilead to come back. Amen? Listen, he doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. We've got to be able to believe in God enough to make a stand for our Lord today. More than ever before. In the darkest of times, he brings people, he calls them to the front to be a light in a dark, dark place. This darkness 
was going over the land of Israel. The true prophet is called only by God and no one else. The true person of God. You say, but I'm not a prophet. I'm going to tell you, anytime you tell anyone about the good Lord and you bring the good news of Christ, you are being prophetic. Amen? You're telling people the good news. The prophet receives their commission from the highest authority there is, and that's God, the creator of all things. It doesn't matter where you're placed. You could be uh, uh, working as uh, uh, an FAA man. You could be working at OU helping clean the halls. You could be working as a mechanic. You could be teaching in schools. You might even be a principal. Could be a welder. God calls ordinary folks just like you and I. The power that comes through an individual's life comes directly from God. This power to be able to witness, this power to be able to call on things that, that are not, but will be. This is what Elijah had done. Elijah called, said there will be no rain. He didn't know that it wasn't going to rain or was not, but God told him to say it, and what happened? It did not rain until Elijah would say it would rain again. We need to understand this. Where do these people come from that God calls? In the worst of times, he may call you from the back of a horse. He could call you from the principal's office, from a, a mechanic, from electronics. It doesn't matter where you're at. He will call you to be used and used by God for the kingdom and the glory of God to be revealed. Do you believe you could call down fire? I didn't think I could. You know, all I did was sit around and fish and piddle and try to survive, but God called me, and before I know it, I was calling down fire and stopping the rain. This is what a person of God can do when we're sold out for the Lord. Amen? Now, it will be done when God calls it because I'm going to tell you when he leads you to do something, all you know is you know the God, the one true God, the one who can stop the rain, the one who can start the rain, the one who can send down fire. That's where it all begins, folks, is knowing him. Knowing him first and foremost. And before you know it, you're called to corrupt, uh, to, do, to face corruption, a corrupt king. So Elijah rises up on the scene out of nowhere. Here I was minding my own business, and God said, go. Well, I knew something about God. The one thing I knew about God is you don't tell him no. Amen. <laughs> because he will get his way. Our God will get his way. Listen, Elijah was facing an enemy, and all he was armed with was a mission of God and a promise of God. That's all Elijah had. Oh, wait, he did have one other thing. He had faith in an almighty God. He was preparing to take on Ahab and Jezebel here for their perverted, their devilish and wicked acts. Listen, children were even being sacrificed. Even pagan religions said they were filthy, they were perverted, they were devilish and wicked. This was the pagan religions, religion saying about them. I think we need to stand around and look and see what's going on in this nation today. Amen? In Ezekiel 22, verse 30, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me, 
on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. I'm telling you, you can be the least of the least. By the way, Gilead, they were part of the Gad and the Benjamin tribes. They, they got the Manasseh. All of them were up in there, some of the least tribes. God always seems to use the least out of the least. Amen? Because what can happen when someone who is weak allows the power of God to work through them? Well, I can tell you, water can become fire. Fire can come down from heaven. Rain can be stopped. This is what can happen when you truly know and trust an almighty God and lean on him with all your heart. Listen, he's not a God of hate and war. He's a God of love. He demonstrates mercy and grace every day to everyone. He was trying to give grace and mercy right here to Israel by revealing to them the wickedness. Do you know what can happen when we allow wickedness to enter in and we start worshiping false gods? All of a sudden, there's sickness, there's illness, there's drought starvation, death, judgment, and hell. And where do you go to lean on? A false god? A piece of stone? Or a, a molded piece of gold that may have feet but can't walk, may have hands but can't handle, may have a mouth but can't talk? Or do you rest on the one true God? who created you and all things that we see. This is who we need to lean on. The great need of today is for our leaders to recognize who God is and start standing up. We need leaders to stand in the gap. Folks, you are those leaders. It may be in your family. It may be in your workplace. It may be in your, with your friends. But we need the people of God to stand and fill in the gap. Isaiah 51, 18 said, There is no one to guide her among all the sons she has brought forth, nor is there any who takes her by the hand among all the sons she has brought up. Folks, today the church needs leaders. Amen? We need godly leaders men and women to stand up. We need godly women to help teach the younger women. We need godly men to help lead young men. We find in our own country what's going on that when we take God out of our courts, when we take God out of our schools, we see what's going on. Doubt begins to arise. Well, is God real? Surely not. You know, we was talking this morning. Uh, they let me sit in Sunday school a little bit here, you know, and it was, it was pleasant to be taught by my brother back there, Gene, about how people, in, even in our uh, system for our courts today, if you're too Christian, you don't qualify for the courts. Something's wrong, isn't there? when we're judged because if we're carrying the badge of being a follower of Christ. Jehovah, Adonai, always was and always will be. He's the one that we need to lead us and guide us. And sometimes we can't always see the unseen and there are people who can't have faith in something that they can't see. So God sends a messenger. Someone that you can see, feel, touch, and believe. And that messenger will be carrying a message of God for you to hear. 
And then that message leads you to a place as to where you can have faith in an almighty God. Do you hear me? There was someone that I could see one time that told me about God. And then I became inquisitive and I wanted to find out more about this God. And I found out he was real. You know, we was talking about Daniel being thrown in a lion's den. Do you think Daniel being thrown in a lion's den was by any accident? He was sold out on God and he knew God could deliver him. Amen? He knew God personally. We need to know God. The message that we need to have today is my God is real and my God is alive. This is the message that we need to have today. Oh, my friends, my friends. You see, they were so caught up with a false god at that time, they didn't know what was real. They were trying to worship something that they thought was real that was false. And God wanted to show them. He said, go show them that your God is real and tell them that it will not rain for three years until you say it again. And he didn't even know how long it's going to be. Elijah didn't know. He just knew that when God would tell him, he would tell them. God was faithful. God had to show them who was real. The drought and the famine would be strong evidence of the Lord God Almighty is real. I want to ask you something today. Have you ever really got to experience his realness, his power, his presence in your life? I'm telling you, it's more than a preacher standing up here behind the pulpit of what God can be to you. You can feel the power. Don't waste your time coming to church if you don't want to really find out who God is. But if you really want to know who he is, seek him. The Bible tells me, Connie, the Bible tells me if you seek him, he will be found. And this is the same God that will never leave you, nor. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that I served years and years and years and years ago. He's the same God that's real today. He comes out of this, this text and he writes to the articles of your heart. And then sometimes you get thrown into a situation in where you need him more than ever before. Amen? And you don't know what to do. You have a test. What can I do? I don't know what to do. And God shows up on the scene. You know what? It may be just an Elijah wearing blue jeans. You hear me? Elijah come in many sizes, shapes, and forms. And mine's round. But the spirit of Elijah always loves you because it's the spirit of the Lord. In Deuteronomy 11, 16, and 17, Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and turn, you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which is the Lord is giving you. The sooner we accept the Lord, the sooner that we reach out to him and say, Help me. Psalms 107 is cry out unto the Lord and he will calm your storms. Yes. And then when you are thankful, he will lead you to your desired haven. Listen, I as Elijah did not have the strength or the courage to do what I had to do. It was God all the way. It was God 
all the way. He was the one that was giving me the power to be able to do what I had to do. Matthew seven twenty nine says, For he taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. Talking about Jesus. Folks, we don't need to be wimpy with our message. We need to walk with the power of God. When you walk with the power of God, love is first seen. Amen? Not anger. Not acting like the world. But walking in the power of God and in the love of God. Ahab was going to learn the truth of Proverbs 13, 15. He said, good understanding gains favor, but the way of unfaithfulness is hard. Do you believe that? There were 7,000 of the prophets in hiding, afraid for their lives. 7,000 prophets, and only one stood up against Ahab. Only one. James 5, 17. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Wow. I want to ask you, will you be like Elijah and stand for God or will you be like the 7,000 of God's prophet in hiding? Which will it be? We must, we must, we must be transformed, folks, by the renewing of our mind. Let's renew our mind. Let's write the Word of God to our hearts. Let's get on fire. <laughs> Let's get on fire for God. Let's get on fire. I, you know, Sunday night I told, I told the church who were here, I said, you know what, if y'all want to see your pastor start jumping over pews, let's show the power of God. <laughs> and they said, uh, uh, no, thank you. We don't want to put any, any pews broke. Let's walk in the power of God. And listen, it's not just, it's not throwing out speaking in tongues and it's not rolling down the aisles. It's loving someone caring about someone showing the power of God reaching out when there's a need and helping when someone is sick and ill we need to be faithful they need to call on us to pray and we need to pray amen Romans 12 2 says this do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And folks, His will is perfect. When we'll start seeking His will instead of our own. And it can begin today by you making a renewed relationship with God. One that says, I want to be exactly what you want me to be, God, not what I've wanted to be all my life. This is what we need today. We need the Elijahs. We've had enough of the 7,000 prophets that were hiding. But you know what? Even Elijah thought, I'm the only one. God said, no, you're not the only one. We're just one of many who can be used. Amen? We must be set apart from this world. We must be different. That means don't be acting like the world. James 4.4, 4, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And we must be willing like I say, to fulfill God's will in our life. Now listen, I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head with this stick. I, I, might, 
I might get someone back at the back here, Doug here in a bit, but, but <laughs> the one thing I want to get over your head is the Word of God. And I want you to feel the love of God in your heart. Ephesians 6, 5, and 7. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants with Christ, doing the will of God from the heart and with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. I didn't leave the mountains of Gilead as Elijah to please myself. I took the trip for God. Folks, it's time we start living our lives for God. I don't know, you know, we all know Paul. The Apostle Paul was a great man. He, uh, he believed in God. Do you believe that? He did everything he could to please God and to bring about the Spirit of Christ. He lived for God. I think we need to live for God today. We need to start doing it. You want your life to be better? How many of you face misery sometimes in life and you just don't know how you keep on going on? Huh? How many of you have problems sometimes you just don't know the answer to? Come on. God already knows the solution. He already knows the answer. He already has love for you. And He doesn't want you hurting. It comes down to this. Knowing who God is. You know, 2 Timothy was being written while Paul was in prison getting ready to be beheaded. And you know, all he could write about was what a wonderful life it is in Christ. Oh, Timothy, don't be timid. Be courageous. This is the man that was getting ready to lose his head for Christ. Well, I tell you what, he also said, I, I have counted all, all loss for gain in finding Christ. Amen. Let's find that today. Let's, let's quit playing the games. You know, we're walking with a foot in the world and a, a foot in the kingdom of God. God wants you all. <laughs> he didn't want part of it. Sometimes we stick our little pinky toe in it to see how the water is, see if we like it. The only way to really find out about God, to find out about all of it, is just to jump in. What is that old song? Wait out a little bit deeper. Wait out a little bit deeper. Step into the water. Wait out a little bit deeper. Just see what God can do for you. Listen. As the prophet of God, Elijah... Wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know how many of you knew that, but I took a chariot home. Bypassed death. Oh, and by the way, do you know that you can bypass death? You can step out of death into life with Christ. This is what our God can do. The devil wants you fooled. He wants you to dabble with stuff in this world. The devil's a liar. And all he wants you to do is be destroyed and face death. Well, I'll tell you what. He doesn't have a hold on me anymore. Amen? And he really wants you, but God don't want him to have you. It's your choice. Who will you, who will you follow?
someone who wants to give you life and maybe a chariot ride home? <laughs> How many of you like to see a chariot coming to take you home? Whew. Boy, what a way to go. It's up to you folks. The choice is yours. We need the prophets of God to stand up, fill in the gap. We got to confront wickedness, wherever it is. Confront it in love, in the spirit of love. As Ron Jarman, I proved it where I worked at the Tax Commission. One of the hardest people when she left, when she retired, she came to me, black lady, real nice. But she could be real cantankerous with some people. She said, I want to thank you for bringing the presence of Christ to this floor. You know, that's something, isn't it? That's what we want to hear. Let's bring the presence and the fragrance of Christ into everywhere we go. I don't care whether you're a grease monkey cranking a, uh, a tightening boats down or doing whatever you do. I'm sure it's good. He said, I don't like being called a grease monkey. Well, you know, hey, I was just a nobody. <laughs> this is what God can do. He can bring us right where we need to be. I've seen I've seen deputies. I, 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 matter of fact, we we were able to lead some uh, law enforcement officers to the Lord, and uh, we had a deputy one time that carried a gun on one hip and a Bible on the other. Doesn't matter where you're at, folks. You can be who you are in Christ. And you know what? You're lovely as you are, but just think what you can be with the fullness of Christ in you. Walking in love. It's like, like these, this, this, this bunch right here. I love them whole bunches. And they have such a pretty smile. And you know what? They light up my life every time I see them. they got a sweetness. But just like so many people. Struggles too. Amen. But we can overcome together. Will you all help me overcome? I'll make a deal with you. You help me overcome, and I'll help y'all overcome. Is that, a, is that a fair deal? Let's stand together. Let's stand together as the Lord. What about it? Will you make that commitment with me today? You know, it was real hard for me to leave glory and come down here to talk to y'all. But Brother Ron asked me, Brother Ron loves y'all a whole bunch. God does too. Let's all stand.